Welcome to the third episode of our Watchmaking Tourism Saga. Today we're in La Chaux de Fonds and its region, where you'll find many of your favorite brands and many important suppliers of the watchmaking industry. This city stands at 1,000 meters, making it one of the highest cities in Europe. And with a population of 40,000 people, it's also the third largest city in the French-speaking part of Switzerland. It gives you kind of perspective on the size of this country. We often laugh among ourselves about the very special weather condition that people endure here because uh, to make it short, there are 150 days per year with sub-zero temperatures and snow is also very often part of the program. But as you can see today, it's also quite sunny being above the layer of clouds that you find in the lower altitude cities of Switzerland. But let's go back to the watchmaking dimension of this region because it's really played an important role and continue to do so. Following what happened in Geneva and the Valley de Joux and the importance of the immigration of French French Protestant uh, craftsmen, the same happened here in these valleys. And during the harsh winter month of the 17th and 18th uh, century, there were many farmers and uh, other people that were invested in watchmaking. But as the industry grew, so did also the fabrication methods, and people started to specialize in their own set of skills to ultimately produce a final watch. This created a notion of a web of uh, specialized suppliers, and this concept prevailed in the watchmaking industry for a very long time. It's quite recently that we see this verticalization that is being imposed by the power groups and the power brands of watchmaking. But let's go back in history in 1794 where a massive fire destroyed practically the entire city, fortunately no casualties, but this was seen as an opportunity to rethink the urbanism of the city. Watchmaking being already the most important economic driver, everything was thought in the direction of making it even more efficient and to support the development of the industry. The grid approach, the same one that you can find in New York for instance uh, was adopted and the goal was really to make the circulation between suppliers as efficient as possible. Streets were made wider, this obviously helped with the snow shuffling uh, during the winter time but also to prevent buildings to create shade on one each other uh, because light being so important for the watchmakers. But the reconstruction of the city didn't stop at those architectural parameters and the social dimension was also greatly taken into consideration. Interaction between different social classes were highly encouraged as these new buildings would house the workshops but also the workers and their bosses. Small gardens in front of the houses allowed the, the workers to grow their own vegetables, uh, something very similar that we see today with the concept of urban farming. The cultural offering was also quite remarkable and of high quality. You had uh, concert halls with exceptional acoustics, uh, theatres uh, and also conference auditoriums. Uh, it was the famous uh, watchmakers or the successful watchmakers that would directly sponsor all these endeavors. All this created a much higher sense of solidarity and the city as a whole was perceived as one giant factory city, even described as an example by Karl Marx. The premises of watchmaking industrialization was set and by the end of the 19th century almost half of the world's watch production came out of this region. The sister city of La Chaux de Fonds is called Le Locle and it's also built under the same grid principle. And between the two and until uh, the beginning of the 1980s, it was really the epicenter of Swiss watchmaking before the quartz revolution kind of uh, had its toll on the mechanical watches. Because of all these very specific and unusual uh, urbanistic features, La Chaux de Fonds and Le Locle have been listed on the World Heritage uh, Site of the UNESCO and I can promise you that people around here are very proud of that. Among some other important people coming from La Chaux de Fonds and outside of watchmaking, I will mention the famous architect Charles-Édouard Jeanneret, better known as Le Corbusier, whose first work can be seen here and whose impact on uh, contemporary modern architecture with this uh, notion of collective architecture has prevailed since. I will also mention Louis Chevrolet, the founder of the Chevrolet Motor Company. I guess it's quite a surprise for you guys. But uh, with this uh, quite well-planned and industrial upbringing, I guess he took some of this back home to the US and you know the success of the car company. And if you come to visit uh, this region, there are two important watch museums. The first one is in La Chaux de called the International Watch Museum, with a quite outstanding collection on display. And you have another one in Le Loc, Le Musée des Monts, with also very fascinating uh, pieces on display. 
So today we're lucky with the weather, but uh, if you come around here, maybe you know, take some warm clothes, even if it's the summer, one never knows.